Sometimes to fully understand American history, you have to read between the lines. These are actual US government pay stubs from 1794 and 1795 for construction work on two of Washington DC's most famous buildings, the White House and the US Capitol. But if you look closely, you'll see that the people being paid aren't the ones actually doing the work. Take this voucher made out to James Claggett, who hired out his slave George to help build the president's house in 1794. Pierre L'Enfant, who planned the city of Washington, attempted to hire workers from as far as Europe, but found himself short staffed. So what did he do? He turned to slave labor leasing African-Americans like George from owners like Claggett. And according to the National Archives, a list of construction workers for the Capitol building and the White House between 1795 and 1800 contains 122 names of African-Americans, the majority of whom, if not all, were slaves. The fact that slave labor built the seat of modern democracy may not be news to you. At the start of the Revolutionary War, about 20% of British North America's 2.5 million residents was enslaved. Even Patrick Henry, who famously declared, give me liberty or give me death, owned as many as 112 slaves in his lifetime. But what if slavery was more than just America's original sin? What if? like those slaves who built Washington, the institution of slavery was foundational to modern America. That is the case that investigative journalist Nicole Hannah Jones made when she published a large collection of essays, short stories, and poetry. It was called the 1619 Project in the New York Times in 2019. This country, she argued, did not begin with the Declaration of Independence in 1776, as many of us, including me, were taught in school, but rather in 1619, with the arrival of the first slave ship to American soil. And unless you've been living under a rock for the past two years, which, given politics these days, actually kind of sounds nice, you know that the 1619 Project landed like a cultural atom bomb, and with it, the formerly obscure academic field known as critical race theory, or CRT, took center stage at conservative rallies and school board meetings across the country. Teaching this horrible doctrine to our children is a form of child abuse. I will do everything I possibly can to fight to the bitter end until you prove to me that you are not teaching my children that they are racist just because they're white. Culture wars have political implications. In the Virginia governor's race last fall, a Republican candidate running on essentially an anti-CRT education platform beat out the Democratic favorite. So how did a piece of journalism named after a year in the 17th century spark one of today's hottest culture wars? And what responsibility do we have to our children when we teach them American history?